puede detenerse. Sus sueños no. Elige bien. Elige UPB. Hello, good morning to all the audience in Colombia and Latin America, and good afternoon to our audience in Germany and Europe. I am Rafael Calles, International and Interinstitutional Relations Director at the UPB Bucaramanga, and I want to welcome all of you to our EPCOPA Lecture Series Closing Session. EPCOPA Lecture Series is a project organized together by UPB Bucaramanga and the University of Potsdam, and supported by Universidad de Caldas, Pontificia Universidad Javeriana Cali, ASCUN, and the German Service of Academic Exchange as part of the Higher Education Potsdam Colombian Partnership. During the EP Copa Roadmap, these universities have been working together since 2018 to build up capacities in the areas of quality, digitalization, and management in higher education. Today, we're going to talk about what does the society of the future look like? And let me introduce you to our sp special speaker for this lecture, Dr. Reinhard Babel. Dr. Babel serves as director of the DAAT Bogota field office, responsible for Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela, since December of 2021. Dr. Babel studied literature and dramatic art and the Ludwig Maximilians Universitat in Munich, Germany. In 2014, he obtained his doctorate degree in comparative literature from the same university with a research project on fictionalization of translation. From 2006 to 2010, he worked as a DAAD lecturer in Chile at the Universidad de Concepción. Between 2014 and 2019, he was director of the DAAD Information Center in Bogota, Colombia. And from 2019 and 2021, he worked as head of section P24, cooperation projects in the Middle East, Asia, Africa, and Latin America at the German Academic Exchange Service in Bonn. Dr. Vavel, welcome to EPCOPA Lecture Series. It is an honor to have you here virtually. And thank you so much for your time to share with us about the Society of the Future. All right, thank you very much, uh, Rafael. Um, welcome uh, everybody here in Colombia, in Germany, in Europe, and wherever you are. Um, uh, congratulations to the UPB, U uh, University of Potsdam, uh, for this uh, organizing this uh, lecture series, and of course, all the other universities participating in this project. So I'm happy uh, to present something to you today, uh, which uh, may, may sound promising and uh, interesting, but uh, it's, it's important for me to state that I'm not talking about uh, DAD uh, cooperation projects or, or scholarships today. Uh, I am rather will be uh, talking from my academic background and uh, it's an experiment and I hope you you like it. So I just try to share my presentation with you. Um, let's see if this. Okay. Can you see the presentation now? Yeah. Okay. So then I I just started. I can't see you anymore, but uh, that's, uh, I hope you can see me in the presentation. That's important. So, okay. What does the society of the future look like? Uh, as I said, I'm I'm not uh, any kind of clairvoyant or something like that. So, um, I what I will do today with you uh, together is uh, look on uh, representations. Um, some of them are, are from, from the past, but I focus uh, on contem contemporary representations of uh, utopian and dystopian societies and uh, just uh, try to find out how those narratives are working and uh, what does it mean for us when we when we're talking about uh, a societal transformation? What can these narratives uh, tell us and uh, in which, which direction are they leading us. So this is un poco, a, a, a little bit of the um, the idea, uh, the initial idea of my presentation. And uh, as I said, I'm not talking about my, my visions, uh, my personal visions, but I'm looking into some of these references you can see here. Um, you can see it's a lot, a lot of them. It was hard to choose and to uh, exclude some of them. So, of course, uh, my my analysis of those representations is not going too deep, but I try to abstract and uh, draw some conclusions, uh, which we can discuss uh, at the end. 
Um, but first of all, um, I, I start with um, a little uh, model. Uh, I try to visualize uh, what, what is uh, utopia, what is dystopia. Um, and uh, well, I try to visualize that normally uh, those narratives work uh, starting uh, from the contemporary current society on. So some somebody, a writer or uh, an artist is, uh, or, or some political scientist uh, thinking, okay, uh, this is our actual society we're living in. And now we, now we try to imagine a, an ideal future society. So this is uh, on the, uh, what would lead us to utopia. And um, of course, uh, uh, we, we don't only think in one direction, that's where we're heading to. So uh, taking this uh, ideal future society as an example, uh, we should lead. But it's also uh, um, a criticism on the uh, current uh, society we're living in. So we imagine it could be better. So that means uh, right now things are not perfect and uh, we, we should uh, try to change uh, it. Um, so this is uh, the, the uh, arrow that goes uh, to uh, utopia. Uh, forward and back to current society and uh, all on the bottom, you see uh, another um, arrow leading to dystopia. Um, so this is uh, uh, helping us to cri also to criticize the, the current society, but imagining uh, uh, the worst case. Uh, so what what will uh, will happen if we do nothing or if we keep doing what we're doing, and then we imagine that uh, it will all go uh, in, the, in the wrong direction, and we will end up at a, a place where we don't want to be, uh, which would be a dystopia. Dr. Raul, uh, excuse me, we are uh, in this moment looking at your first slide. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if you uh, want to try to share our, the screen uh, once again in the, in the full okay, screen. Okay, sorry for that. So thank you for interrupting, but it's a pity because it, <laughs> you, you can see the, the second slide now. Uh, yeah, but we are in the black background. Uh, yeah, I I think that it it's only in the in the up of the of the screen in the option uh, probably view side or. But well, I, I okay, let's go back. So now you can see it uh, at all. Yeah, with the framework of PowerPoint. Yeah, but when I start the presentation, you only can see half of it. Yeah, the first slide. Okay, that's strange. And and if I start from here, sharing uh, or the starting the the presentation. Okay. Yeah. This is this is okay with the black background. So there is an option in the in the up part of the of the screen, uh, mm -hmm. like um, options to to view. I think that is the the option in the middle. Uh, okay. Because I, when I when I when I share it, I only see the presentation. Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah. Okay. You want to? Yeah, that that option, the second option. That one. Okay. Now it's better. Yeah, it's totally okay. 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 Sorry for that. So um, then I was talking in vain, <laughs> I guess. But uh, now you see the the references, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I I will jump to this uh, this model again. So that, because the, this is I think the most important uh, thing. I will the references we, we will see later on as well. Um, okay, this uh, this is the model I was talking about. Now I, maybe it makes more sense as you can see the the slide. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that, this is just to to visualize a little bit the the patterns of utopian and dystopian narratives. And I think it's quite clear. It's not a complex model. Um, but um, important for me is that uh, the relation we have between utopia and dystopia, because it's clear if you want to go to an ideal future, it's like that. And if you go, if you if you're afraid of uh, it, it, uh, involving into a dystopia, um, it, I think it's also cl quite clear how it works. Um, but um, in my analysis, I found that uh, it's it's not always that clear what is utopia and what is dystopia and uh, the in, what me uh, what in, intrigues me is uh, the relation between this utopia and dystopia because there is where well, it is really getting interesting and all right so um 
I hope just let me know if, if the representation is not working. So, um, but I hope it's fine now. So, we we start uh, with the first uh, example of uh, representation, and I start with two past uh, well maybe well known uh, representations um, of Utopia. Maybe the the first or most important one is uh, the myth of Atlantis. Um, I think everybody has heard of. Um, but uh, maybe not everybody knows it. It's coming from um, Plato's uh, dialogues on Timaeus and Critias. Um, and I just want, want to have a, a little look on it. Of course, uh, Plato wasn't talking about utopia. The, the, the term, uh, the notion didn't exist like this uh, in his times. Um, Plato, as you may know, uh, wrote a, uh, in the Politeia, he uh, wrote about the ideal state, but it was a theory. And he somehow uh, was obliged to, to put it to a real example, uh, to his uh, theory that is uh, to show that his theory actually can work. And uh, he does it in different ways, but one of them is um, uh, taking the, a real example, which of course uh, it's, it's only fictional, uh, I, I heard that there are still people out there searching for Atlantis, but uh, I think they haven't found it up to today. But uh, what he does is interesting. He um, opposes um, two um, um, examples of a state. One is Atlantis and one is the ancient Athens. Uh, it's not his actual society, Athens, where he is living and teaching. Um, but he mentions uh, this, this two um, references as uh, opponents, as mirrored opponents. And mirrored is, is a quite literal sense because uh, the ancient Athens is on solid ground uh, and without any naval forces. And Atlantis is uh, uh, located on an island uh, outside of, um, of the Mediterranean. Um, so uh, he is uh, describing the, the society of Atlantis. And uh, in, it's not a total dystopia, you could say. But uh, there's one point uh, of his criticism. Um, because he shows that Atlantis, uh, despite its uh, well-organized society, um, is uh, is uh, punished at the end by by the gods um, and uh, submerges into the ocean. And the reason for this is 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 its hubris, because they uh, were a big sea power and had a where well, the society based was based on military expansion, and. Um, so this is why the punishment comes to Atlantis and uh, is, hasn't been found up to today. And you could say that uh, um, and just, uh, the, the, the Atlantis is a kind of dystopia where the, where the actual current uh, Athens society shouldn't have to. And uh, the ancient Athens is presented as an utopia. Um, and why does uh, um, Plato talk about this? Because in his uh, in his times, uh, the uh, society in Athens uh, tried to make a political decision to create a naval forces or to enforce the naval forces, and that was a criticism of him. For so, it just uh, we, I think we can start here, and uh, we we jump to the next example uh, into the uh, 16th uh, century and the famous Thomas More writing called utopia and this is where uh, the term utopia comes from um, and we use it today and so this is a real uh, um, reference for for any uh, theoretical uh, imagination of an utopic society um, it's interesting um, that uh, there is a frame narrative um, and this frame narrative is based on actual uh, happenings that, uh, a meeting between thomas moore and erasmus from uh, rotterdam um, but uh, they, uh, Thomas Moore says, now I'm writing down an oral report from a fictional person. It's Raphael Heifertley. Uh, but uh, of course, he, 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 he presents him as a, an, an actual person who actually has been on this island called Utopia. And well, um, in this frame narrative, there's a strong criticism or reflection on contemporary English, English society and politics, uh, especially they're talking about a uh, death penalty and the legal system, which is not working well. Um, so this is the, the frame. Uh, and then uh, they start to um, describe um, the, the, the society on the island called Utopia and uh, the people living there called Utopians. Um, just a, a, a short hint on the actual scientific discussions uh, up today. Uh, 
the, the question always is raised, was Thomas Moore really thinking that this uh, society he describes uh, on Utopia is an example to, to follow or is it more a satire? So he himself uh, um, used the, the playing, playing with the words Utopia and Utopia, which you spell uh, differently, but you pronounce exactly the same. And utopia with an U would be a non-place, and utopia with EU uh, would be a happy place. So, non-place meaning, well, it's 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 uh, just an idea, it's just a vision, but it doesn't exist really. And utopia as a happy place would really be uh, ex an example to follow. Um, okay, so um, on the next slide, I, I show you a little bit about the description of the island. I won't go too deep in this uh, description. But I think just mentioning uh, here the, um, the, um, the most important characteristics of this society on Utopia uh, show us why uh, Thomas More and why this writing uh, is, is such a big reference. Thomas More could be called like the godfather of all utopian theory. And uh, when you see this uh, uh, examples for, for instance, all properties common or money transactions uh, do exist, you, you will understand why it became later on a reference to social YouTube utopists uh, or um, um, and, and you may think that Thomas Moore was not uh, totally agreeing with that kind of uh, uh, characteristics from utopia and and another one that uh, seems uh, striking or interesting to me is uh, that there was a, a certain um, uh, limit for the growth of the cities um, um, and I thought that may be also in, in reference to the discussions of sustainability we have today, because uh, the question is, what do we do with the eternal growth of a population or growth of the economy and so on? So uh, in, in, the, in the early 16th century, Thomas Moore was uh, thinking in this uh, envisioned uh, fusion, uh, fusion of uh, utopia that there has to be limits and we have to deal with them. And of course, uh, uh, as you can see, Utopia is also an island. So I will come back to this uh, notion uh, at the end as well in my conclusions. But it's it's striking and it's it's interesting that it's always an island, uh, Atlantis as well as Utopia. All right, now we come uh, to more uh, present representations. Uh, I took references from films, TV series, and and, and books as well, and. I, I selected like uh, seven uh, utopoi or utopos. I, I tried to uh, put it in a positive um, way. Um, and the first one, or the first thesis would be uh, a society optimization. So how can we use, to, to make it, in, uh, to formulate it in other words, how can we use uh, technology to improve uh, our society or our individual or societal behavior? And uh, here I, I, I chose uh, three references. Uh, one is from uh, the series Black Mirror and the uh, episode Nosedive. Um, there you can see on, on the bottom on the left, uh, Lacey. And I think it's quite easy to imagine that uh, if, even if you haven't seen the series, uh, that there is a, a Lacey uh, or everyone has a personal rating. And the rating can change uh, because the rating depends on other persons giving you five stars or three stars or no star and so on. Uh, I think we're quite familiar with uh, this rating. And uh, Lacey at the beginning uh, of the episode has a 4.2 and, and ends up with a 0.3. So um, she tries to improve but fails and uh, in a consequence she is excluded from work, from certain stores, from access to uh, weddings and so on because we're only allowed uh, to access those uh, events when you have a, spe um, a minimum rating. Um, so uh, it it starts with an, maybe an ideal or, or good idea to improve your behavior, but it, it fails at the end. Uh, something similar happens in a movie from a, a German movie called Zero. Um, uh, they're also working with an app um, to optimize your behavior. Um, and there is a journalist, you can see the protagonist here, uh, using a device uh, to connect uh, to internet. It's just an example for me that in the future, uh, we will not use uh, cell phones or tablets or computers to connect. We will use different devices. Um, but uh, it, it's also uh, like the, the, the app to optimize the individual behavior uh, creates a lot of problems. And uh, that's what is shown in, in Zero as well. Um, and then um, 
uh, I I talk shortly about the uh, latest novel of Dave Eggers. It's called The Every, and Every is a well a monopolized mega corporation. It's a fusion between Facebook, Google, and Amazon, and um, and it's well, it's from the beginning. It's quite clear that it's it's more a dystopian novel. Uh, so um, the the um, corporation um, Every is uh, located um, on an island in the in the bay of um, uh, San Francisco and within this corporation within this island uh, there is uh, you could say like a utopian vision of, of a, so, uh, a society because all, all the people working there developing new apps uh, and, and a new um, technology um, they are um, well intended you could say they are trying to improve society honestly so they are politically absolutely correct there is a, a no discrimination of any kind and no gender no race uh, and so on they, they they only eat food that is uh, fair traded and so on so it's quite interesting that uh, the, the dave eggers describes uh, the corporation and the per people working and developing those apps um trying to do the best but of course the, the outcomes are uh, quite dystopian um delaney is a protagonist she tries to sabotage uh, this corporation with its mega power uh, its monopolized power uh, from within and just to give you an example she, she says well we can with all the technology we can uh, develop an app that shows us when we are uh, in a video conference with our friends or family we can uh, detect if they're what they're uh, saying is really honest or if they are lying to us so it's like a lie detector and uh, and and of course the, the intention is maybe good to so people in the future won't lie to you your friends and so on or, uh, or the other way around you can discover that it's not your real friend and uh, you can you could uh, end the relation so um and then well what i guess does is uh, delaney is uh, proposing all those apps and they are put into um uh, reality uh, and she hopes that uh, people will some time in at one moment at one point reject this uh, this uh, this new technology but they don't they love it so they <laughs> it's, it's quite ex successful this app that i just mentioned um okay and uh, i mentioned that every is located on an island uh, and it's interesting because um uh, it's uh, there is still a, um, a state law that uh, has to permit the public to access to this island. So there is a fence uh, separating uh, um, every from uh, the rest of the population. And uh, so for me, it's quite symbolic because there is homeless people living at the shore between uh, the corporation and, and the sea. Um, and uh, of course, it's quite symbolic because uh, it's, it's it's playing with the idea that there is an elite uh, in, included in this uh, bubble uh, of an ideal uh, corporation and really uh, in front of them there are people suffering and, and they are excluded of this technology and, and this uh, and this society as well okay so i, I jump to the next uh, utopers i i present to you um well how can you use technology uh, for love um to find the perfect match the perfect partner and this is what uh, it's about in, in another Black Mirror series called uh, uh, episode called Hang the DJ, um, where they they uh, they use the technology, artificial intelligence, to match people um, who who otherwise wouldn't meet and uh, try to find uh, a stable and perfect uh, relations, uh, um, love relations. And in the German movie I'm Your Man or Ich bin dein Mensch. Um, it works quite a bit differently but uh, still it's it's using artificial intelligence to create a human android you can see him here it's called it's called tom and a scientist called alma uh, who is testing is like an ethical test to this new technology um and uh tom or the uh, the android is uh, created that to learn so he learns all all the necessities and the desires alma has and is becoming uh, uh, each time a better uh, lover and a better partner. Um, so uh, of course it's it's coming becoming quite uh, creepy at, a, at at one point as well. But uh, I like the movie quite quite a lot. Uh, but you you can imagine that uh, that it's not um, a romantic concept of love, uh, but uh, still technology is used to um, well uh, satisfy uh, our desires uh, and. Uh, in this in this movie and in the series 
Okay, uh, next utopus I, I present is called Society Without Crime and Violence, uh, and um, the uh, first one is uh, another episode from Black Mirror called Archangel. Um, the, the story is quite simple. Uh, uh, Mary, the mother, uh, loses uh, her three-year-old daughter in just for a few moments, and she gets uh, that scared that she says, well, anything could have happened to her. So um, she learns about a system called Archangel, and you can see that uh, in the middle, in the picture in the middle, this uh, um, system is implanted into uh, the brain of uh, the daughter, Sarah. And now she can control her, she can see and hear everything. And uh, uh, so that, that helps her, at, 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 at the beginning at least, to be more uh, sure and confident uh, about uh, the well-being of her daughter. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see that the vision of uh, Sarah is uh, manipulated as well. She is uh, prevented from seeing horrible things. Uh, for instance, here she is, when she's uh, bigger, she's, um, uh, she can't see the blood of her finger, which she herself is uh, um, uh, opening the wound of uh, her uh, finger. Uh, okay, so um, of course this turns into a quite dystopian uh, thing as well when Sarah becomes an adolescent and Mary uh, turns off uh, the device and she, no she doesn't want to use the system anymore uh, until she learns that Sarah has a, has a boyfriend, uh, that uh, she's taking drugs and she's uh, becoming pregnant and then she turns it on again but uh, Sarah is nearly an adult and so you can imagine the, the conflict between them is, is starting again. So. Um, well intended, but uh, quite with a dystopical end. I, with the same utopia, society without crime and violence, I jumped to a, a Brazilian uh, TV series called Omnisciente. Um, and here, I think it's it's interesting. Maybe when we talk about differences between Latin America, Europe, um, but you could discuss it, of course. Uh, this this I ideal uh, living without crime and violence uh, may be a really more pressure, pressure uh, issue here in, in Latin America. And so it's uh, maybe it's not uh, um, coincidental that it's uh, created in Brazil. Here you can see technology is used uh, to create uh, an, an, well, an, a gated city. It's a private security uh, firm. Um, you proposing to live in a place uh, where there is no crime and no violence. Uh, and how does it work? Everyone has a personal drone, which is 24-7 controlling everything you're doing. Uh, you can see here on, on, on the right-hand side some images. Um, so this visual archive, it's, you're taped uh, all around the clock. And whenever you try to uh, uh, break a rule or you, you, you couldn't steal the helmet, for instance, from, from uh, the casket from the uh, for from the bicycle because uh, automatically this would be reported uh, instantly and you would be arrested. So um, and interestingly, they it's quite interesting because they um, it's this visual archive, uh, all this video re re uh, tapings are controlled by an AI, not by a human being because it could be misused, of course. Um, and it, and it will be in the series. Uh, interesting is the, the picture on the top because this is uh, separating the, the real city from the gated city. Uh, and when you, when you leave this gated city, the drone stays, uh, stays there and is waiting for you when, when you come back. But then you wake up, the, day, the minute you wake up, the, the drone is uh, taping you and con controlling you, of course. All right, I uh, jump to the next uh, utopus, uh, this called, well, um, society with eternal life or afterlife. Um, of course, here uh, the the, um, the idea is that technology could help people who are um, suffering from illness, uh, elderly people, uh, and this series called San Junipero uh, from Black Mirror again. And as you can see, uh, there, there's two um, protagonists, Yorkie and Kelly. Um, and on the right hand side, you see uh, Yorki is uh, lying in hospital, but you will learn it only after you've seen uh, the virtual or the simulated reality uh, uh, in in the 80s and the uh, picture in the middle, uh, because there Yorki is uh, having uh, fun with um, with Kelly in a beach resort. Um, but we later on learn that uh, it's only a, a simulated reality, and what what she really is 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 uh, suffering and lying in a hospital. And well, this raising questions about um, 
how could we uh, well make it more comfortable for for ill and uh, elderly people um, help with the help of technology and later on uh, there is uh, we learn also that there is an option that you can choose when you pass away physically um, uh, it's, if you, if you die, to say so, uh, you could still live on in this simulated reality if you want to. And this is uh, actually the question between Kelly and Jorgi. It's an ethical question at the end of, um, of this episode uh, because uh, uh, Kelly has uh, to decide if uh, she wants to be with uh, Jorgi uh, forever in this uh, uh, simulated reality. So um, it's quite... Uh, you could you could discuss if it's utopical or dystopical uh, and then uh, uh, the same utopus uh, you can see in another series called upload um, there I, I won't go too deep into it but there is a, the protagonist is is dying in a car accident and his wife uh, uses all his collected information um, and his images to uh, send him to an eternal uh, to an afterlife uh, in a virtual afterlife you will you, you see it on the top, um, where he is uh, uh, living on somehow, uh, and he has the possibility to connect to uh, to his wife, you see on, on the below, uh, and on the, on, on the left side, even he is participating in his own uh, funeral, uh, separated only by this, this glass, uh, um, and he's uh, like an, uh, well, he has an avatar uh, you can see uh, from, from the real life as well, and you can communicate. Um, it, the series is a comedy, but it's interesting because they they show you a, a few details. Uh, for instance, three D three D printed food and so on. But what uh, makes uh, the series really interesting to me is that there is a capitalistic economic logic behind it. Because uh, um, here the protagonist only can live in this uh, um, comfortable uh, afterlife because his wife is paying for it and he's paying good money for it. And if she doesn't continue paying, uh, he, he, uh, his virtual life will, will stop. Um, so um, only so, and, and so real people in the in the reality are saving money. So in the end, they will uh, end up in a in a virtual heaven, which is more comfortable than. Uh, but they have to pay for it. Um, so, okay. Um, well, more or less the same uh, utopias you will find in another Black Mirror's episode called Be Right Back. Um, imagine what happens. You you have uh, um, a partner and this, this, uh, here you have Ash and Martha and Ash dies in a car accident and Martha being pregnant. So it's, it's a shock, it's trauma and, and everything. So Martha says, okay, um, there is technology. I can use all the data existing, all everything uh, Ash left in the virtual space, his pictures, his photos, his videos, his messages, um, his emails, and so on. Uh, you can collect it, and AI will turn it into an, a virtual partner. So at the beginning, uh, this uh, AI is, trying, is, is starting to communicate with uh, Martha. And you can see it on the top. Is that you? He says, yes, of course, it's me. And in, a, in the next stage, uh, um, they, they, they create a physical Android version of Ash. So he, he does not only com communicate via the computer or the devices, uh, but uh, uh, re, uh, is coming back to life somehow. Um, of course, it gets uh, also uh, difficult when uh, uh, Father uh, Ash uh, or, the, or the Android meets his uh, real daughter and Martha at one point wants to stop uh, this experiment, but then it's getting really uh, complicated without any uh, further uh, spoilers. And then we jump to the next utopos. Uh, here I called it a transhuman society. And I took uh, an example from another uh, series from Great Britain called Years and Years. Uh, it's clearly a dystopian society uh, regarding the political background, um, because it's imagined that uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, wins the second term as a president and then he fires a nuclear missile on a Chinese island which uh, changes uh, a whole po political international system and in Great Britain one of the consequences is is that the right-wing prime minister is coming into power but this is just like the, the background story and uh, um, I want to focus on on one character is called Bethany Bethany you can see here on the top is a, is a daughter um, in, the, in the family and she's uh, i like the the moment quite well when when she has her coming out 
because the parents uh, uh, know or, or uh, uh, recognize that uh, there's something wrong with her daughter and uh, they they think uh, uh, she is uh, uncomfortable in her body because uh, she wants uh, to become a boy and not a girl so it's quite traditional but in in this very moment when there is this coming out um, they're prepared and they say we will understand everything uh, daughter don't worry you can choose to be everything you want if you want to be a boy there's no problem uh, we will love you and so on uh, so they're quite mi open-minded but then bethany tells them oh, you get it all wrong uh, i don't want to be a boy i want to be uh, a robot i want to be a transhuman and, and this is quite shocking for them at the first uh, moment of course <clears throat> but later on as you can see here yes uh, she has these operations and she she can uh, communicate with uh, computers, with internet. Uh, she can talk via phone without uh, any devices because she has uh, implants. And um, at the end, uh, in this in this uh, series at least, her, her technology or her t being transhuman helps to prevent uh, uh, the right wing uh, prime minister to to victory. So it's uh, it's it somehow uh, shows that this transhuman uh, part could could be really helpful as well uh, in this situation at least okay and the next utopus is uh, i call it living in the metaverse and i, I took another example from black mirror uh, the, the episode is called striking wipers uh, here in the middle you see um, um, danny is uh, one of the protagonists uh, he is connecting and this uh, also mentioned it it's interesting he's um, playing virtual reality games but uh, without any computer with any device he just connects this little button to his brain directly and then his his eyes get blank and and he is into this virtual reality and uh, he he is playing uh, these games with his uh, buddy with his friend called carl and they choose characters fighting characters you see on the left and on the right and um one is one of them is choosing the female character and the other one the, the, the male character and then in this virtual reality they're having uh, sexual relations um and, and somehow feel attracted to each other and this of course complicates their real life um uh, and well the the attraction is that high that they are more they're more and more living in this virtual reality and not in the in the real world so um this is for me it's like a, a and an, an example for for this uh, utopia you could live in somewhere else which is called uh, virtual reality or if it's a good or bad thing you 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 choose um, but uh, um, well you, you know uh, there's people spending hours and hours uh, playing virtual games right now as well so you can rather ask a questions are they more living in virtual reality or in the, in, in our world uh, uh, right now all right, uh, the last utopus, uh, I, I come back now to an ancient or more, more older um, example um, and a quite different example as well. Uh, it's, it, uh, I took it from uh, uh, Immanuel Kant, you see on the right hand side, uh, in his sketch of the um, uh, philosophical sketch from the perpetual peace, uh, of course. Uh, and nowadays, uh, with uh, recent happenings, we, we want to live in peace and hopefully it would be a perpetual uh, peace. Um, but well, it hasn't become reality so far. But uh, what me interests here is uh, one the concept of the, the the citizen of the world and the concept of hospitality. Uh, it's an ethical uh, concept. Uh, it's an obligation. Uh, Kant says, whoever comes to your homeland or to your home, you have to receive him or her. Uh, you couldn't say no. Uh, so this is uh, like. Uh, the one condition he says is is necessary between the relation between nation state and individual and and of course you imagine all the migration is going on in our days uh, it's uh, for me at least it's still uh, a valid uh, concept and a, a concept worth thinking about it and as you may know uh, this uh, sketch from Kant became um, uh, the starting point for uh, United Nations and uh, the human rights. Um, so it's it's really interesting to go back to Kant. But what me interests here is uh, he puts a, a worst practice example, if you want to say so, like a dystopian example of how it shouldn't work. And he took a historic example of Japan uh, and, 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 and his system called uh, Sakoko. Um, uh, which means locked country. And actually Japan uh, was uh, uh, closing down his country for nearly 150 years 
uh, at the beginning they do it to protect itself from colonial uh, European powers or, or other Europe, uh, other uh, colonial powers. Um, but at the end, it it uh, it's it made a, a real damage to this uh, this to his own society. For me, as you see, it's interesting that it's 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 not uh, coincident that we're talking about an island again. All right, so I will go to the conclusions. Time is uh, running, so uh, I made two con conclusions. First is uh, not surprisingly, Utopia is an island. Uh, as we have seen in this, these examples from the beginning, the, uh, when, you, when we talk about an ideal future society, uh, there's always coming up this notion of an island, and the question is why. Um, of course, on the one hand side, you could say it's, it's easier to imagine a, a, a new society or a different society from the scratch, uh, and then you imagine an, an, an deserted island, and there you will create your new society somehow. Um, but uh, on the other hand, uh, this, uh, as it is, uh, we can't live. Every, everyone can't live on an island. But um, I think there is another uh, consequence, um, and and I try to to put it here with the metaphors because you can connect it with different metaphors: nation state, metaverse, paradise, prison, uh, uh, and so on, and the gated communities, gated cities, and so on. And I wondered if. Um, when, whenever we talk about utopia and it's co so connected to this metaphors of or this metaphor of an island, is is there a problem with the, this uh, this relation between utopia and island as well? Because that means somehow utopia is including or excluding someone or somehow uh, uh, parts of the society. So um, there may be a problem with this uh, connection between utopia and island itself. The second conclusion, I call it lost in dystopia. Um, as, as you've seen, uh, when we talk about this uh, different narratives, it's clearly that the dystopian narratives prevail. Um, and well, you, you can ask why or what consequence tries this, uh, um, this fact. Um, the only real uh, typical utopian narrative you, you can find, and I try to emphasize a little bit in, on that, is uh, the use of technology or the technical development to solve societal problems. And um, in the future that we have to deal with this technology, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and the metaverse, because are the main factors and they are uh, somehow used to, to create this utopian narratives, but they are also the same factors who dominate the most of the dystopian narratives. So the question is, where, where, uh, what does that mean at the end? So is good intentions always this destined to to fail uh, to undesirable consequences or not and um i found a, a quote from a um, philosopher called Yuval Noah harari you may know him from his famous writings homos deus and, and and others and i i found it quite striking that two years ago he was comparing uh, liberal de democracies with authoritarian um, more authoritarian uh, systems political systems and and he stated uh, and this goes along with my um with why analysis he stated nowadays there is nearly no utopian uh, narratives uh, so um and and, and he think it's quite uh, uh, a problem uh, because when we talk about societal transformation we need utopian uh, narratives he's saying but there are none so he he's uh, um basically saying that there are two challenges ahead for mankind. One is techno technological revolution and the other one is climate change. So I took this these two uh, um, uh, challenges and now I come back to uh, uh, the initial model of, uh, um, of the patterns of utopia and dystopia. And when we take seriously what uh, uh, Harari is, is saying, that means uh, our uh, utopian, there is no utopian narrative. So there, the only thing is left is this. It's the current society, and we're talking climate change, we're talking techno technological revolution, but we all, all, all the, um, nearly all the narratives uh, just lead us to dystopian um, envisions of the future. And this, that might be a problem. So um, that would be like the, the, the last conclusion I, I would uh, leave with you. Um, I end with uh, some questions I raised, and we can discuss them. Um, but uh, maybe it's more interesting for me and for you to to hear your questions and 
and to discuss them. Uh, of course, you can take this uh, this questions I'm showing here, and um, uh, but Raphael, maybe you will, you will tell me if there is some uh, questions already in the uh, in the chat. And I I think I'll, I'll end, I will end my presentation right now. And thanks for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Renker, for this interesting presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, connected at this moment and, and also trying to, to take an advantage of these um, kind of tendencies, uh, but also insights and drivers that will be very important for the society on the future. Personally, I, I have to say that it's really important to understand how these kind of measures will represent an opportunity and not a, a barrier in, in terms of a society uh, with a lot of modern practices, uh, with a lot of new tendencies that are taking every part of ourselves and, and also trying to, to move to a tendency uh, when technology is totally a reality uh, with this kind of, of things about metaverse and new alternatives that each day we could see and, and we could keep in mind to, to understand and, and to work with but also uh, with a preservation of the direct and human interactions and promoting social social relations. Uh, we have a first uh, question in our chat, uh, Dr. Reinhardt from Jose David Garcia, uh, who said, thank you for the presentation. And my question is, do you think the metaverse will make people interact less physically or is it an opportunity to enter to new virtual societies? Uh, yeah, well, it's a good question. I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I can respond to it uh, uh, quite well. Um, but um, well, I think it's no coincidence that Facebook is has changed its name into Meta, and and in Silicon Valley they are all talking about this metaverse, and 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 actually they are. Um, it, it's described a little bit in this novel of Dave Eggers. Uh, when 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 they talk about uh, um, climate change, for instance, they say. And don't worry about climate change. Uh, this will be there will be a technical solution for it. So uh, <laughs> and it's it's well it's getting quite simplicist. Uh, but to the question, of course, uh, I'm not saying tech is good or bad or whatever. It's it's uh, I think it's a personal inclination you may have. Of course, metaverse uh, helps you to connect to people uh, you otherwise wouldn't be able to connect. And and there is uh, I think. Um, things you can do you can use this uh, in a quite um, positive way as well but if you ask me if this will lead to less uh, physical contact between people with to less social interaction um i'm not that optimistic because i i i could, I could say i don't know what it will become into the future but maybe you you observe your your surroundings your friends uh, or, or or your students for instance uh, uh, are they? Are they? Uh, you can observe them standing somewhere at the university or somewhere at the bus stop. Uh, I, I would say more than half of them is is uh, is watching their cell phones and they are not uh, talking to the person next to one. It's uh, so. Uh, I, I think all those um, examples I, I chose are not that far away science fiction. They are uh, based on on things we are already doing right now, but they're just thinking like two or three steps ahead and and. Um, Maybe uh, there will be a psychological effect when we we fed up with all this technology. We we will will be that eager to have uh, physical and social contact again, like it happened maybe in the pandemics. Uh, so that we uh, that we learn, yeah, it's all, all quite well. We have uh, virtual uh, 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 meetings and so on. But uh, when when we come back to uh, physical contact, you learn uh, to appreciate again. Yeah, definitely, it's in parallel. Uh, of the societal transformation challenges uh, that we are facing now, Dr. Bravo, and, and it's totally, I agree with your point of view because we were in almost two or three years of COVID-19 uh, mm. with a special reduction of physical interaction and contact and this kind of international and, and also new alternatives uh, based around technology also represent an opportunity uh, to, despite the, the societal, uh, and in this case, the, the healthy conditions of our world, trying to, to be in touch with people in any part uh, around the world. Mm, we have a new question from Professor Jörg Hafer uh, from Univers University of Potsdam in Germany uh, that said, thank you very much. Do we need to realize a vision 
Could not it be something more like a moving target? Yes, yes, of course. I, I think it, um, as utopian narratives work, there are uh, somehow the de definition of utopian is it's uh, it's something that is uh, far away and it's some it's a non place. Yeah, you will never reach it. And and of course, uh, it would help to have uh, like moving targets or objectives. You could you could say uh, you, you have to modify them uh, on 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 the run, of course. And uh, but I think it's. Um, I, I wondered what what uh, because I was I, I am consuming the series. I am reading those books, and uh, so uh, I think uh, most of us do. Uh, and the question is, what does it do to us if if we have uh, this kind of imaginary this uh, this art uh, this kind of um, examples um this is the, those are the examples we have right now and they, somehow they are moving because uh netflix and, and and all of them are producing new series new movies all, all the time and they 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 are changing their their narratives as well but what they're not changing is uh, so much is uh, uh telling us uh, like the utopian parts of it uh, of this evolution they they are talking more about dystopian parts of the evolution and the question is what does it make to us and to our uh um well intentioned society uh, or, or scientific and academic work and and discussions um but i agree yes of course it, it can't be one uh, uh um, one aim one objective one utopian uh, narrative and we go go forward to to reach it it, it never worked like this but still uh, and that's what haradi says um uh, he he's worried about uh, what we're doing right now, and there's a lack of uh, of positive uh, and visions of of future. Yeah. yeah, that's a recommendation to go forward for it. Um, we have an, another question from Aduarte, uh, a student of the UPV Bucaramanga, uh, and said, "What changes would you make to the metaverse proposal?" <laughs> okay, good good question. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a tech expert. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by, by all these technical um, um, things we can do. Um, uh, but well, for instance, what, what, that's not my example, but I, I go back to Haradi. He says we have, uh, whether it's artificial intelligence or it's, it's a metaverse um, or, or what, whatever we can do with it, try to um, imagine good things. For instance, when you talk about work in the future, uh, robots or artificial intelligence, androids uh, or the metaverse, um, they will do a um, lot of the work uh, we are doing right now, the workers are doing right now. So this, this, uh, there is two consequences. One is there will be more uh, unemployment because people will lose their jobs, they will lose their, their income and so on. So there, there could be a, a real problem. Um, on the other hand, he says, yes, but we could use this uh, free time uh, and we could somehow think about um, the jobs that are still remaining and artificial intelligence or the metaverse will not be able to do, for instance, uh, to educate, uh, educate our children, to raise children. And this is uh, work which is done uh, right now normally without any payment. And why a society couldn't uh, afford to pay the women or the persons who are educating our our babies, our children, um, and so on. So this is just one example. Uh, another one I could imagine is, of course, uh, within the, the health uh, system. There is uh, possibilities to detect uh, illness and to, to prevent it and to cure it. Um, the, the, the danger here, again, is uh, technology, it, it's, it's already close by. Haradi says maybe within a few years, we will have a, a, um, a, a transhuman uh, body or or, 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 or or medical help that will give us an, an uh, a, I don't know uh, the possibility to every each ten years we can renew our body and and then uh, live until 150 years old or something like that. Um, why not? Uh, why not? Uh, but that just raises another question. So, uh, what will we do with all this time? What we will do this with this, this living time? And um, and and on the other hand, who can afford it? Because uh, it's tech that has to be paid. And and the question to our society is, what uh, are we are we leaving this technology within the private sector, or will we use it for the public sector and uh, so everyone can access to it? 
uh, it raises other questions. What 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 does it mean if the whole uh, human population uh, will reach 150 or more years? Uh, the population will raise, and this will be creating problems to sustainability as well. Uh, so uh, I think it's interesting, but. Uh, uh, there is potential to to think it in a utopian positive way and not only uh, on, on a negative way. So now I was talking about not only metaverse, but all, all the other uh, technical de developments. But uh, I, I'm sure that metaverse uh, will uh, also give us uh, options uh, to use them in a, in a, in a positive transformational uh, way. Yeah, actually, it could be a, a mechanism to rebuild also relations between public sector uh, academic NGOs and also private institutions uh, trying to to be always um, a step forward uh, to people are thinking and also to mm -hmm. people have to do uh, to be actually um, directly uh, with presence in, in this kind of, of tendencies and interactions. Um, we have another question from a student, Dr. Vavel, from Nicole Mendes. Uh, that is interesting because she is an international business management student uh, here at UPB Bucaramanga. Uh, and uh, her question is, how much do you think the metaverse will change the way of doing business? Uh, that is a question directly related to the business world. <laughs> okay, this is not really my world, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it will change everything. Uh, you you uh, right now um, you may know that you if you want to buy uh, pro uh, property in the metaverse, you can do it. So um, uh, and and of course uh, that uh, things about Bitcoin and so on. So. Um, I, I'm not, a, as, as, as I said, a clairvoyant or, or something like that. But uh, if you want to invest, uh, if you want to create a business um, in the future, you won't think about uh, opening a bar or a restaurant here in Bucaramanga or in Bogota or whatever. You will think about opening a bar or a restaurant in a metaverse and you will win money with that. I'm sure. I'm sure that this will come. And so I'm not sure if, if, if uh, uh, the this is part of the um, the things you you you're being teached at your university right now because it's like it sounds like science fiction but it's it's actually quite quite uh, quite real already or, or virtual real i don't know so uh, i'm sure um uh, there's that there, there lots of the business will be done there and you will be paying uh, with uh, bitcoin or other uh, currencies uh, that of course has to be transformed later on in something else but you can uh, a real estate uh, a property uh, in the metaverse. You can you can buy it right now, um, and there is investment in this. Um, so one day you will, if you enter too uh, too late, and you want to open your bar or your restaurant in the metaverse, you will have to pay uh, uh, the rent to the one who who bought the property first. So it's just an example. As I, I repeat, I'm not an expert, but uh, you, you can think all, all the other business models in the future, and and they will be connected to the metaverse. That for that, I'm sure. Yeah, of course, Dr. Raul, and it's a, a proof that is taking each part and each piece of of the market in different sites. Mm -hmm. uh, all this NFT movement it is incredible. Also, if we understand like an opportunity to do in business, uh, to also transform and support new entrepreneurs, new small entrepreneurs who very easy with an NFT uh, could receive a lot of, of money and also to do an interaction in terms of social and economic environment, uh, also using these kind of opportunities and tendencies like that, like the metaverse. And we have another question from Nicolas Zuluaga uh, and is the metaverse is an advantage or disadvantage in terms of social and psychological development. And how can this influence human development if it is seen as a distance between reality? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's. Uh, I try to show that uh, um, there is both. Uh, so you can use it, I think, in a in a in a positive way. But there there is the the danger that uh, the effects. We, we don't know what the effects will be on a psych psychological basis and so on. But um, not to think that abstractly. Uh, there are studies, uh, psychological effects on children, for instance who grew within the last two, three years uh, living, not in metaverse, but living in a world where they have had to isolate, uh, had to, to they, for instance, uh, students went to university, but not physically, but virtually. 
that's that what happened in in the pandemics. Uh, so first semesters uh, who wanted to start their their their, uh, their studies. And they were told by the university, well, stay at home and connect to your computer, and there you can study. So, so this is a kind of a metaverse. So, they, they, you you were studying virtually. It doesn't it didn't matter if, if you were at home or, or anywhere else. At least you could connect. The the only difference will be in the future that maybe you will not connect like we do now with uh, with the headset and the computer, but with other devices uh, uh, where we can connect directly to the to the brain or, or whatever, and and then say, okay, I. I I, I have classes now, and you connect, and you will you will be there. So um, I I can't answer the question myself, but I think uh, you could have a look at the scientific studies that have been done on the the, the impacts of uh, this kind of distance learning, uh, this this kind of virtual learning at school or at university, and uh, the impacts uh, or the or the results of the studies show that there is a, a strong impact and it's not only positive of course you learn uh, a lot of things and new things but uh, uh, it has an impact on the social behavior it has uh, impacts on on uh, on your uh, psychological well-being and so on so uh, uh, it's a good question and there, i think there's lots of studies to to be done uh, still yeah we have a, a final question, Dr. Babel, to close the, the Q&A session. And it's, it is a, a general question that probably a lot of students and, and also of our viewers could have. Uh, if you can share with us any advice uh, to be prepared uh, for the next years, for example, uh, if you are thinking about uh, how human beings could face uh, the world and the society in 2032, for example, uh, what would your advice uh, to be prepared and to be uh, and a step forward of all these tendencies uh, of transformation? Well, it, it's it's a good question, and and I'm uh, well. What what I would say, to, uh, what what first comes to my mind is, uh, well, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of this uh, this development. It will come uh, sooner or lesser, and and I'm sure right now you are much or the younger persons are much more experts on this than than me and my generation and uh, what I uh, still as an older man would recommend is uh, be critical uh, reflect on it uh, what does it make to you and your friends and your society uh, don't don't evo don't avoid it uh, use it learn it um, and uh, always think about what what does it mean for me for my life and for my society to the relations what is it doing to my environment uh, if I use it in a way that uh, they, they sell it to me or they give it to me yeah so that that would be my advice uh, go for it but be critical and reflect on it so this is the only way we can um, uh, I think uh, give it a, a positive use uh, to this te technology so uh, discuss it with your friends uh, and and your family and and, and everyone so uh, say okay i tried this new uh, device i tried this new metaverse uh, app or whatever and and it's really interesting um, but uh, uh, i don't know maybe i i i learned it in the last uh, seven days i i stayed at home and i didn't go out anyway so then maybe something uh, could be critical so that that would be my advice go for it but but uh, reflect on it as well so be critical, reflect, don't avoid this kind of discussions. And each day in, in this direction, how will be an opportunity to be prepared for, for these interesting changes that we'll face in, in the future. So Dr. Vavel, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this is the final, the final lecture of our series that we started since November of 2021. And actually it was an incredible honor to, to have you here virtually and, and being part of this interesting in this third lecture with a lot of topics uh, from environmental issues to societal transformation processes in fact uh, and in deep and also these kind of realities that all the humans and, and all the, the students and professors and also academic community are facing every day so this final advice represent uh, an incredible conclusion of oral lectures uh, of all the point of views that would be receiving from incredible experts and professors from Colombia and Germany uh, and try to do an abstract of how we can be prepared uh, for this kind of societal transformation. So thank you so much once again for your time, for all the support that you will be offering uh, to students here in Colombia and also to e promote this incredible 
relation in terms of academic exchange between Germany and Colombia also. And it was an honor to have you here with us. Thank you. So, Bye -bye.